Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you a, uh, another video. Um, this one I'm going to be once again looking at an alternative brand of paints and giving my thoughts and feelings on them. I've already done paints such as Chimera paints or some of the Army Painter Speed Paint ranges and stuff like that. Well, the uh, company Hataka, um, who is generally known for producing paints for uh, historical miniatures like planes, boats, tanks, that kind of thing, has recently launched um, an acrylic lane, an acrylic range uh, designed for painting up miniatures in a more fantasy and science fiction setting, which is much more up my alley. They very kindly sent me out set one and two um, to check out and make some videos for you guys on um, and i decided that it would be super fun um, to try out these new paints on something a little bit different to uh, a warhammer miniature so uh, mediocre hobbies is smashing into the marvel universe with the uh, hulk miniature from marvel crisis protocol so a lot of skin a lot of ragged cloth a lot of nice blending perfect for testing out these paints so I hope you guys sit back and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so these are the two sets of paints that Hataka Hobbies sent me out. This is their basic miniature painting color set one and two, or volume one and two, should I say. Each one contains six paints. If you do decide to take the plunge into getting some of the Hataka paints, I do recommend getting both sets and they complement each other really well. Um, and it almost is just one full complete like starter set is the 12 colors. This is the beast that I shall be tackling today, the Crisis Protocol Hulk miniature. I actually saw the Hulk Buster miniature um, and knew that I was going to have that in my miniature collection. And I couldn't have him without having, of course, his nemesis. And so I bought the Hulk, which was lucky I did because now I get to make this great video. So after construction, I sprayed it black and gave it a zenithal of a bright color, white, bright gray, whatever you want to do. And this is the miniature before paint. I do thoroughly recommend you use a wet palette for the use of Hataka paints. They are very heavily pigmented paints and I, to keep that kind of strength of pigment and stuff, try not to dilute them with too much water. So that's why I went for a wet palette and um, they flow quite well um, and very well once you use the wet palette. The coverage on these paints is also fantastic. Um, it's something that I wasn't even expecting. Uh, as I thought I would have to do two or three coats of this bright green that I was going to use to start the skin off with. And then I started to apply it like this here. And in one clean coat, bright, vibrant green went over the skin. No brush strokes, like no nothing, no like nothing. It was, it was kind of bizarre actually stop and take photographs at every stage of painting this skin because I couldn't believe um, the results that I was getting. So that was point one for Hitaka Hobbies. Um, seriously decent coverage. So I just took my time, was as neat as possible, made sure I got into all the nooks and crannies of the musculature and stuff on him. Um, I made sure to get that nice solid base coat down. Because we were going to be painting this miniature with just Hitaka Hobbies, that means we're not gonna get the opportunity to shade into the recesses and stuff like that. So we are gonna to wanna to get this base coat into all those recesses. So now we layer on, it's not gonna look bizarre. It's not gonna be this spot of white screaming out at you. The other thing I thought the Hitaka Hobbies um, paints could have used was uh, something um, to help me mix paints a little better, like what colors and tones to use. So I wanted to of course start to make the skin tone lighter and lighter and lighter. And I actually had to go to my Chimera pigment color chart thing that they sent me on how to do that. And when I looked at that, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to add yellow into the green to make, I was just gonna start mixing white is kind of what it says in the back of their box. I'll give you an example as to why that won't work here. So when I mix green with the white, it does indeed go brighter, but it pushes the tone the wrong way. It starts to turn like almost like a minty color and a lot less natural. Um, not something I personally think you would see on a skin tone and definitely not the right color for the Hulk. So. If I hadn't have had the Chimera pigment chart, I wouldn't know what to have done in this particular look, uh, moment. But I still learned once you mix in a uh, green with a bit of the yellow, it still stays bright and vibrant and green, but it's definitely a more natural tone, something you would see on skin. And I knew that we had hit the, the, the right tones. I was like, okay, this is what the whole skin is supposed to be built up to. Um, 
and as you can see here you can see the pools the, the color i mixed with yellow matches the skin tone of a hulk a lot more than the green and white color scheme on the other part of the palette does so i went in and started layering up all of the musculature of the hulk with the starting green paint with a touch of yellow to it I'm not going crazy here there is going to be two layers of this um layering highlighting should i say and um, the first one's going to be really subtle and soft and then the next one is going to be a little bit harsher um, and it's really going to make the skin uh, kind of pop afterwards so i just took my time left the flat green in all the recesses and just layered up all of the heavy parts of the miniature so a six pack those big pectoral muscles bits that goes under his ribs whatever muscle that is i have no idea um <laughs> and then of course big chunky arms shoulder those big traps and um, his back was a, a little bit more complicated i've never seen such a muscle muscled chest chest back and i wasn't 100 sure where the highlights were going to go but i think i managed to wing it enough and i think it looked turned out pretty good um so things like uh shot arms i always found easy to paint um, especially heavily muscled arms because it's very clear to see um all the different muscles um, on top of each other and to know where to place those highlights and with the hulk it was a super easy process because i don't think there is anything much more muscled than this guy in miniature form anywhere in the world <laughs> So I managed to smash my way through this stage. Ha, ha, see what I did there? Uh, and then a touch of highlighting across his face, same thing. Lips, chin, nose, eyebrows, cheeks, but leaving the starting green in all of the uh, recesses. I may have should have uh, shown you the mix of kind of green to yellow ratio here. Um, like I said, it's just a touch of yellow into the green until you get a color that will show up brighter than the dark skin but not overpower it as you can see it's quite subtle color change once you've applied it to all the model you can see the difference between the recessed parts and then the raised muscles and as you can see the complicated back i was talking about but i've now got a fresh uh, lump of green and yellow or blob of green and yellow whatever that is um, so I'm going to go into the, the final layering highlight of it and this time I'm adding a lot more yellow to the mix I want it to pop this is going to be the, uh, the the final highlight of the skin on this miniature and since the skin makes up 90% of the model you kind of want this to look kind of really good so this is where these highlights were very much only placed on um, like imagining the sun coming straight down on them so any under like under arms under the curves of all the muscles and stuff like that i'm going to leave the previous color but everything else i'm going to give it that layer of a brighter green taking my time with this this is kind of a less is more scenario i did really um thin kind of scratch line highlights across the flat areas and i just built them up to a stage that i was happy with I find this way really works because you don't tend to go overboard with one brush stroke. You can see if it needs a little bit more, you can add a little bit more, but if you go overboard, it's hard to take it away. And this is it after I've already highlighted the abs and the ribs and all those kind of bits and pieces. You can see how much it's made the, uh, the miniature scream and pop out. I'm not gonna lie, I took my time with painting the skin in this miniature. I'd say overall it took me nearly two hours to do the skin, but considering there's such a a small amount of other detail on the model i'd say the whole process of painting this guy took three hours two hours of being the skin and an hour for all the other bits teeth eyes hair his little short shorts um so just keep going around adding those highlights to the raised areas and when you're done you'll have skin that should look something like this which i'm super pleased with it's time to go on to those shorts now the starting uh, magenta that they gave me i felt was too bright to begin the process with so i did add a touch of black to it um this is me once again learning how to mix paint a little bit more so as you can see i added a touch of black to the pink and it made it so dark so far. i was like okay it's still black okay it's still black. okay this is too dark touch of black to the magenta is all i really wanted so i basically kept mixing until i found a tone that i uh was the right consistency for me. These are the kind of mistakes in mixing that I think you'll only make once. Like the next time I want to darken out magenta, I'll know that you just put a drop of black in. 
we're gonna jump over to the miniature and start applying this slightly darker magenta color to his uh, shorts. And as you can see, the coverage it's gonna give straight away is also just phenomenal. I'm gonna be super careful here not to hit the, the skin. Because it's so many layers of skin, well, it's only three, but I still don't particularly want to try and patch up a big blob of magenta that's hit his midriff or his legs or anything like that. So I took my time, I was really careful, and I made sure to, uh, to keep the skin nice and neat and tidy. After I'd done one complete coat of that, I just uh, went to uh, almost pure magenta and gave it my first layer job. Once again, leaving that really dark um, mixed magenta in all the recesses and crevices between the legs, anywhere the shade and shadow isn't going to hit. And then layered it up. When I had done this, I originally thought that those were the only two steps I was going to do, but I wanted it to be a little bit more bright to match the skin tone, so I added a touch of white to magenta and gave it that kind of last um, highlight, just like I did with the skin. It made it pop a lot and made it not seem like such a flat, textureless piece. It definitely felt more like um, fabric after I was through working it. And all I can say is, once again, even a simple process like this on the shorts was a thoroughly enjoyable thing to do. I mean, I painted this entire miniature using six paints, I think. Can't remember the last time I did a paint job that only required kind of six paints. Um, I did a quick job in his eyes, just filled in the pupils with white and then just a little line of black. Um, to work with the teeth, because I started with that bright white um, spray already, they were already really bright, white, and vibrant. If I was doing this video and I wasn't just showing you Hataka paints, I might have just thrown a shade in here. But because I am just working with the Hataka paints, what I did is I got the brown oxide paint, watered that down a little bit, and painted over the entire teeth. And this gave, obviously, more coverage than I was expecting even still. So I basically just browned in um, his big, grinny teeth. And then after that, I just went over them with a touch of pure white on all the teeth. So it left that kind of really dark pinky brown color between the teeth and under the gums and stuff. Um, and that really added something to the, the mouth itself. A quick coat of the black on the hair. And then straight after that, I just added a touch of um, white into that to turn it to a slight gray and highlighted the hair up. And with those two stages done, that brings the painting of the Hulk from Marvel's Cri uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol to an end. I have an army. We have a Hulk. This is my first Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature that I have painted up for the channel. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see me do more heroes and if you have any specific heroes that you would like to see me do. Okay guys, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, Attack a paint from me, get a big thumbs up. Um, they have, um, I believe, how many paints are in a pot? Six, so there's 12 paints. That's the entire Hataka range currently um, done in two sets, volume one and two. Um, and yeah, like I said, they're a big thumbs up from me. Um, they were super easy to work with once you had them on a wet palette. Uh, they blended super well. They were super bright and vibrant. Um, if you've watched a bunch of my tutorials already, you'll know that um, it's very unlike me to not use shades or contrast or anything like that. To actually slap down a heavy base coat and then layer up um, is not something that I'm super uh, comfortable with. Um, but these paints definitely made it a joy. Um, and I honestly can't think of a model that I painted in the last year that I'm more proud of than this Hulk miniature. So I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little review on these paints. And um, if you did, make sure you give the uh, video a like, drop any comments below you have um, for questions. If you have anything you wanna know, um, I'll do my very best to answer each and every one of you guys. Um, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that little subscribe button um, and join the Media Copies family. And if you like what I do thoroughly and you want to uh, contribute even more, there are things like uh, my Patreon and stuff below. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. I'll catch you in the next one.